and uh, Jung is Mahasam, who uh, spoke very specifically about his work as an artist with performance, but also the combination between performance and curatorial work and the agency that can be found in that combination. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask both Irene and Jung just to give us a, a little statement, um, just to bring us up to speed with some of their thinking. So can I start with you, Irene? Um, I'd like to hand over now to Jung. Jung is Mahasan, who is also a contributor um, in, in the book, and who's been um, <coughs> finishing his PhD um, in, in London, uh, who's been uh, also curating exhibitions. So Jung, after um, our time in, in Dhaka, in the, in the public debates, between then and now, during the preparation of this book, can you give us some insights as to where, where your practice has been going? Um, you spoke very uh, passionately in the text about the agency that you, you wish to achieve. Yeah, thank you. Uh, um, in another night, the world of you is my son. Uh, in strong, Takisha Takauchi to Namasha Baraku. I use my own uh, Aboriginal indigenous languages. I belong to the Bulu nation, well, Bulu tribe uh, of indigenous people. My father's was, uh, my, my father's belonged to the Bulu nation, and my father, my grandmother's belonged to Kanakanavu nation. My mother, belong to a Thailand nation. And there are 16 uh, indigenous tribes in Taiwan. And there are also 724 communities in Taiwan. And we spoke more than 42 regional indigenous languages in Taiwan. And it, it is my hu huge honor to be here to share Taiwanese indigenous uh, culture in our practice. And thank you, uh, Oka and Katya. And uh, according to uh, my, my article, uh, Ethno Speciality as Sovereignty, Curating Performative Encounters Within Taiwanese Indigenous Contemporary Art, I just finished my, uh, my exhibition at Goldsmith University of London uh, in May this year. And the title is This Perception Performative Encounters of Taiwanese Indigenous, uh, Taiwanese Indigenous Contemporary contemporary art. And since the, uh, since the democratization of Taiwan politics and the advance of indigenous art movement, Taiwanese indigenous curatorial practice has experienced a great expansion and transformation, effectively voicing issues surrounding decolonization. And performance and performativities are fundamental to understanding the emerging procedures contextual nature of indigeneity, which is for many uh, politically in, 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 enabling construct that receives ongoing col uh, colonialization and expropriation. And indigeneity expressed as performance is a form of a radical uh, resistance. In my own article, I emphasize ethno-speciality as one of the many productive ways to approach indigenous curation. In this context, content, ethno speciality refers to an alternative and experimental cultural models tied to the expansion of Taiwanese indigenous contemporary art practice. The end of this article is perceived how indigenous cultural practice functions as a questioning and experimental research practice that's tried towards a new relation between representational difference, thought, feeling, and identity. And which are the nuance of both indigenous cultural capital, uh, uh, and colonial struggle. And uh, it's really my honor to, to dedicate my, my written to, to this book, Indigenous Art. Uh, several world indigenous, indigenous art curation and criticism. Because uh, we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, uh, indigenous uh, curators to play the indigenous exhibition in Taiwan. And we have a lot of mistake that when not indigenous curators to manipulate, uh, to manipulate, manipulate, manipulate 
our academic, uh, our academic uh, paper and the discourses. So that, that's why uh, uh, I play the role of the young researchers and in, in indigenous uh, artists and curators. I, I have, um, uh, I, I pay more attention to, to invite our indigenous uh, artists to make the exhibition in another country internationally. And also in the future, I, I'm, I plan to transform my guest house in my own community. Um, maybe last year, uh, I would like to transform my own guest house community to be guest house space, to be international indigenous residency. I would like to provide uh, as food, as accommodation with food and invite uh, indigenous artists from different countries in, in the world. And the, the end of this, this uh, indigenous residency is, uh, is to create the land-based practice and concept and invite artists to, to my own community and live with me and also live with my, my elder people and the children. And we can share each other and learn each other. After that, we will have the exhibition, more exhibition. We will have the exhibition in my own community, community space. And then I will send my local artist to, to, to make an exchange residency, maybe in Norway or Australia or Canada in the future. And uh, I'm quite young, and, but I have, but there is no, no one to, to support me this project. So uh, I'm really quite happy uh, to, in, in this space, I, I really feel that my ancestors living with me because uh, in, 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 modern, uh, in modern languages, we don't have the word of art. And most of my villagers say that. I'm, I'm, um, I'm stupid because contemporary art is not, it's not a, min, a meaningful thing in the future. So as an indigenous curator, I really want to uh, encourage my children and my Aboriginal children, uh, my indigenous children in my community to, to give them more um, powerful and, in, in, in a more powerful world for them to, uh, to have the, uh, to, uh, to know each other in the world and to learn another indigenous culture in the world. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. We, we certainly will keep very much in touch with you about these developments because I'm sure they will be um, an important way to keep those dialogues going. I'd like to think now with Kimberly um, about some thoughts. And um, one of the situations that um, seems of, of great importance when thinking about, uh, about Satvi, when thinking about the way in which um, artistic practices have moved forward, have been displayed, have been categorized, um, clash of ideologies between modernity and um, some thinking and some methodologies is, uh, is the question of Duoji. And you in this trip, um, Mati Aikyo actually took you to see one of the great Doya masters, uh, Perisak Yusuf. Um, and I just wanted to pick on that point, um, on the question of, of, of Duoji, the fact that uh, Duoji has been severely misunderstood um, misclassified by modernist art histories, is being relegated to the position of, of a handicraft, something domestic, when actually Dwoji is, is a whole universe. It's, um, and there are many of you here who of course can speak more eloquently uh, than I can, so I, I, I beg apologies for that. But um, we know that it's a, it's, it's a body of knowledge, it's a, it's uh, indigenous perspectives, it's understanding material, it's understanding nature, um, it's a spiritual perspective, and that all of those elements lead to the creation of an object. Um, but that that in itself 
cannot be the reductive focus of, of, of the Wajib. And I was very keen to know from your country, from your position, um, has there been the same situation? Are you engaged in that kind of um, problematic or are things a little different? Um, I think historically our objects were placed in either